Okay, that's good enough. I think uh, I've had an interesting night, so I wanted to share this with people. Uh, it's about something that I discovered. So I wrote a book. Actually, I wrote three. Full Spectrum Astrology is the name of the trio. And in Full Spectrum Astrology, starting around the middle part of the book, I talk about how when you go along the astral wheel, uh, you've got these patterns. You've got different levels that go backwards. And so if you're familiar with the conjunct or the trine or the opposition or something like that, then you know. You know that there are certain kinds of angles. But the angles don't just stop there. And so what I have up here in the corner of the screen, I, my mouse is not going to be able to point to it. Let me move it. There we go. Okay, so what I have in the screen here is a list of all of the kinds of angles that we're usually familiar with. Conjunct is when two planets are right next to each other. So that's going to be, say, uh, see these two. Selene and Lilith are conjunct in Brigitte Bardot's chart. And opposition is where they're across from each other. So here in Brigitte Bardot's chart, you've got Saturn opposite Mars, and so on and so forth. And some of the less studied astral, not asteroids, um, aspects are the quintile, fifths of a circle, basically, the septile, sevenths of a circle, and the novile, which is ninths of a circle. Now, those are all level ones. But you can also have higher fractions of a circle than one 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 half, one third, one fourth, all the way up to one twelfth. You can get to one thirteenth. And in my books, I call that something that wraps around. It would just be a level two conjunct. So when you study this, and I, I looked at all the statistics, and I came to these these patterns, which basically said that your uh, your angles tend to go backwards in their context. So all the, these normal angles that we have, like the regular conjunct or the regular opposition, actually take place against a Pisces background. So they take place here. And then when you get to the level twos, you have these angles taking place against the Aquarius background and so on. How do I know this? Looking at hundreds of charts. So uh, now, if you're gonna fit if you're gonna fit 12 signs along a cycle and you have 12 angles there, then if you take a cycle in a cycle, then you can squeeze 12 angles into a single sign. And that's actually what I did in 144, the last book, all 144 aspects. So all the level ones get crammed into the Pisces background, all of the level twos get crammed into the Aquarius background and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm using is divisions of a sign called duodecanates. Uh, I don't know if that's the proper term. I've been using it forever, so I stuck with it. Duodecanates are just twelfths of a sign. So if you take 30 degrees and you divide it into 12, you get 2.5 degree sections. The first duodecanate of uh, Pisces is going to be right here from 0 to 2.5 degrees. The second duodecanate is going to be from 2.5 to 5 degrees then the third is 5 to 7.5 degrees, and so on. Now, that's fine when you're going in order, but when we're looking at angles that go backwards, we consider the first duodecanate to go this way. So from 27.5 degrees to 30 degrees of Pisces is where the conjuncts live. And basically what that means is that if you've got planets there, then they highlight your conjunct behavior. Brigitte Bardot, for example, has Saturn right here. So this is a level two, and it looks like 2209. It's the fourth duodecanate going backwards in Aquarius. And so that would be a level two square because we've got conjuncts, oppositions, trines, and squares, as you can see from this, this, this chart up here. Okay, so that means whenever she uses her Saturn, people are more likely to talk about her morals or her families or family or something like that because that's what a level two square is about. That's not actually what I learned. This is all a recap of some other stuff. Let me tell you what I learned, which is really, really cool. So it, it, I wasn't planning to record a video on this, but uh, it was so interesting that I had to share it. I was looking at some stuff and I found that you can have an easy access to what people will call psychic or intuitive uh, ability, I guess, 
by looking at a single important point in your chart. I've always wanted to know this. You say, I want to be psychic. I want to do stuff that is intuitive and, and you know, be able to tune into some otherworldly things. How would I do that? Well, there are lots of ways to do it, lots of ways to practice it. But there's one place to look in the astrology chart for where you're actually most skilled at using your intuition. And that place is right here, the Imam Coli. Okay, so the four axes, the Ascendant and the Midheaven, and the descendant and the imam coli are some basic flanks in the chart. Ascendant is your rising sign. It's where sunrise was when you were born. Uh, the descendant is your response to things. The midheaven is your reputation. And the imam coli is your exposed aims. But if you think about the story of the sky when you look at it, you can see that your, Im your, your ascendant is actually what is going to be expected of your day at sunrise. The midheaven is the highlight of your day, and the descendant at sunset is where you're going to reflect on how your day went, and so it is your encounter response. Your imam coli, though, is very interesting because I talk about it as being drawn out in your chart. So your imam coli is always going to draw out whatever it's on in not just your chart, but in everybody's chart. And so the purpose of the recording is to tell you this. If you want to know where you're most psychic or most intuitive, where you're most able to draw stuff out of not just yourself but everybody, then you would look at your imam coli in the chart right here. The premise is that this is the lowest point in the sky called the nadir. And when you're at the lowest point in the sky, then you've got a planet which it has no choice but to rise from there. And just as points at the Imam Coli have no choice but to go up from there, your Imam Coli gives whatever section of the wheel no choice but to get exposed. So I've pulled up four charts in order to give you an example of this. Uh, it's really interesting, really amazing, so uh, you won't be amazed until you look at it in your own chart, but this is just an example of other people. So Brigitte Bardot, right? She's a famous pinup, and even as she's gone out of the industry and started doing stuff in France, she still remains a rebel. I like her. I think she's she's classic, no matter what her age is. Um, so Brigitte Bardot has her Imam Coli right here, and if we're counting backwards, this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, right there, seventh. It's the seventh duodecanate of Aries, and that's a septile. So septile, as we can see from this chart up here, is one-to-one uh, -one communicating. It's very social. And the Aries background is actually a level 12, so this is like the highest one, because level 1 start here, Pisces, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is a level 12 septile. And what it brings out is people's impulse, their impulse to do what? to talk to each other. So Brigitte Bardot is a natural conversation starter. And that may explain her styles of popularity from her pinup days to her kind of controversial stances on things in France. Uh, whatever she does, she's always good at getting you to talk about her. Now, here's Elvis Presley. Here's another person who's interesting. His imam coli, as we can see right here, is 2650 Pisces. So from 27 and a half, that's a conjunct. From 25 to 27 and a half, that's an opposition. And it's a level one. It's a regular opposition, getting people to value. Elvis Presley can always draw out the value in people and make them feel either self-aware or, uh, I guess in the case of industry, in, enact their, not enact, but inspire their interest in money and his difficulties with that. Uh, getting people to dance and kind of fill their, their body awareness. This is what he does. He extracts opposition type behavior in people. So uh, it's part of the reason why he's, you know, he's so popular. He's, he's shaking and moving and all that other stuff. It makes you want to do the same. Niccolo Machiavelli wrote The Prince, and he's most known for that whole uh, it's better to be feared and loved type thing. Now, Niccolo Machiavelli is one of my favorite historical characters because we don't know a lot about him beyond the prince. 
uh, people associate his writing with the ends justify the means, but actually he was a really, really uh, prolific scholar, an interesting scholar, and his political theory is is um, very insightful. It's very realist, and it's not it's not just realist, but it's idealist as well. Uh, aside from all his talk about tyrants and things, he actually was more of a republic, um, a, a fan of the republic. He really wanted the people to rule. Uh, from his native Florence, but he's got a very interesting story, and, and it's unfortunate that people kind of demonize him as the guy who said the ends justify the means, but you can see what he draws out of people. Now, first of all, uh, Niccolò Machiavelli, he, I, I hear he was a bit lecherous. He had a kind of scandalous life, and uh, you can see that he's got his hair right here. His bonds, his passions, and his uh, his Saturn is a structure all tended to be drawn out in his own life but ultimately he's got his imam coli in the ninth duodecanate going backwards of level 11 so he is extracting values inner values from people what they actually hold dear and in level 9 as you can see up here that's a novile because these these go in order one two three four five six seven eight nine so he's having people declare their values and what Niccolò Machiavelli is always able to get people to do <clears throat> is announce what they really value so no wonder you get the whole ends justify the means and feared then love thing he's actually talking about how tyrants should work in political theory and so the realism comes through lastly is the psychic Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey is interesting because his Imam Coli is a level four octile. That level four octile means that, uh, it, that he's he's extracting people's steering given their impression on strangers. And so the Sagittarius background is a bit mysterious because you tend to think that you're going to display a lot of public behavior, but uh, you are, but it's behavior among foreigners, and so it has a very Cancerian feel, because um, when you're walking in public among foreigners, then basically you're making an impression, and in making that strong impression, uh, you, you kind of get a feeling that you're putting on people. So the level fours here, have they've always seemed to me to be less Sagittarius and more Cancerian, and it, they should, because they go backwards, right? The whole thing goes backwards. But what Edgar Casey was able to extract from people all the time is their impression on strangers for the kind of steering or manipulation that those people would exercise. So he can tell you about, I'm not going to say your soul, but he can tell you about uh, your your style of exercising power in a broad group that doesn't know you. And that starts to look soulish, you know, for lack of a better word. Anyway, if you want to know where your intuition comes in, then you want to look at where your Imam Coli is. Now, I started this video by talking about uh, the duo decanates and the angles and all that other stuff in order to help you do that. So what you'll do is you'll think of these signs as the background for uh, for uh, your action and then you'll think of the duo decanate as the thing you specifically do against that background so for example if your imam coli were let's pick a random place here in virgo let's say it's right there it uh what was that going to be four degrees let's say it's four degrees virgo here's what you would do in order to see, well, what does that mean for my psychicism? First of all, Virgo is uh, an analytical background. So you'll display your intuition in the context of your own analytical background, and you will also draw out other people's intuition in that setting. And because it's at four degrees, you would count backwards duodecanates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this is busy information in the analytical setting. It's associated with stress 
but if your imam kola is there you may have a tendency to to stress people out in the work environment or you'll have an intuition for what the stress looks like that's going to be your talent in everybody's chart every person you meet is going to have this drawn out by you so it represents a kind of strong talent anyway I never knew this existed um, in synastry by the way what you'll note is that when you have other people's planets on your imam coli they just cannot help but show you those planets uh, it's it's a really interesting kind of discovery and I encourage you to to look into it more but yeah if you've ever wanted to know where you could be really really intuitive and that you wanted a starting point for being psychic or whatever they call it intuition then take a look at your imam coli it'll give you a clue of uh, it'll give you a clue as to where to start